Violation of Bell's inequalities is often given as an example of the supposedly peculiar character of quantum mechanics, distinguishing it as a threshold from classical mechanics, which is thought not to be capable of violating these inequalities. In this presentation we will demonstrate otherwise. Consider two large vessels of over 10 liters each, separated and placed at a large distance from each other. Transparent water of 20 liter volume is to be distributed among these two vessels. Denote by MA the measurement which determines whether vessel A contains more water than vessel B. Call that quote, quantity measurement. If the quantity of water in A happens to be more than the quantity in B, then the value of MA is yes. Otherwise it is no. The corresponding measurement for vessel B is MB. Obviously, if there is more than 10 liters in vessel A, then inevitably the water in vessel B will be less than that in A. The experiment on vessel B will yield the result quote. No. Denote by MA prime the measurement which determines whether the water in A is transparent. Call that. Quote, transparency measurement. To carry out transparency measurement one removes one liter of water from the vessel and makes the determination of whether the water is transparent. If the water in A happens to be transparent the outcome from the measurement MA prime is yes. Otherwise the outcome is no. Similar transparency measurement on the water in vessel B is denoted by MB prime. The measurements in which we will be interested here in this discussion are coincidence measurements done on both vessel A and vessel B at the same time. There can be only four coincidence measurements, namely, MAB, MA'B, MAB', prime, and MA'B'. Prime. The corresponding outcomes, the expectation values, from these coincidence measurements can also be only four. The values of these expectation values will be denoted by EAB, EA prime B, EAB prime, and EA prime B prime. The values of these quantities are plus one when measurements involving both arguments, coincidence measurements, yield either yes, yes, or no, no. When the two arguments in each expectation value have opposite meaning the expectation value is negative one. Let us now carry out the experiments. First coincidence measurement. Let vessel A contain 10.1 liters. This means that vessel B contains 9.9 .9 liters. This will give EAB equals minus 1. Note that above distribution of the 20 liters of transparent water is completely random. With the same probability we could have had 9.9 .9 liters of water in A and 10.1 liters in B. For simplicity we will observe the former case. Second coincidence measurement. This measurement consists in an experiment to measure the transparency of the water in A. And, together with it, simultaneously, an experiment to compare the volume of water of B. With that in A, we take a 1 liter sample of the water in A and determine that the water is transparent. The result is yes. Removing of 1 liter of water from A causes A to contain already 9.1 liters, which is less than the volume of water in B. 9.9 .9 liters. Therefore, an experiment to compare the volume of water in B with that in A, yields a result, yes. Thus, this second coincidence measurement will yield a result. E, A prime B, equals plus one. Third coincidence measurement. Now we take a sample of one liter from vessel B. Observation on the sample indicates that the water is transparent. The result is, yes. The act of taking the sample, however, leaves 8.9 liters of water in vessel B, which is less than the volume of water in vessel A. 
9.1 liters, the result for A is yes. Therefore, the result from the coincidence measurement in this case is EAB prime equals plus 1. Fourth coincidence measurement. Evidently the result for this measurement will be EA prime B prime equals plus 1. Because the water in both vessels is transparent. Thus, we get According to Bell's theorem, what distinguishes classical probabilities from quantum probabilities is that the quantum probabilities violate the shown inequality making it greater than 2, while classical probabilities according to Bell's theorem should always be less than or equal to 2. As can be seen, however, the simple experiment presented here, although classical, does violate Bell's inequality. Therefore, it is not true that the quantum mechanical entities are subject to some special laws and statistics, which classical objects are not. Thus, if violation of the equality at hand is the basis to speculate about non-local character of the measurements, making it so that a measurement at a given location inevitably affects a parameter distant from it, such conclusion can also be drawn from classical propositions. Both in the classical and in the quantum mechanical case the two parts of the system, the two vessels, respectively, the two particles, are not independent from the onset, as a result of the way the problem is construed. The fact that the two vessels, far removed from each other, are not independent and this is the prerequisite for the violation of Bell's inequalities is not something immediately evident. The dependence between the two vessels is ensured by the initial condition that the total volume of water in the system is fixed. 20 liters. In the same exact way, the fact that the two einstein podolsky rosen or EPR, particles are not independent is not something immediately evident. However, the dependence between these two particles is ensured from the beginning. Their state is described by a common psi function. A simplified version of that psi function, representing singlet state, is put forth by Bohm, and later used by Bell to state his theorem. The parallel between the two classical vessels removed from each other at a great distance, and the two EPR particles, can continue also when measurements are considered. When a measurement is carried out of a given observable A, for instance on the first VPR particle, all the eigenvalues of the matrix A representing this observable are known a priori, without exception. Although the very act of measurement quote, extracts at random only one member of this set of eigenvalues. Thus, when we apply the matrix A on the psi function, common for the two particles, we do not expect to create something that was not there in the first place, that is something that was not there by definition. Exactly because of this initial setup of the function, when we measure the momentum P of the first particle the momentum of the second particle must necessarily be minus P, the concrete values of P being completely random. If we repeat the experiment the concrete value of P may be different. It is to be noticed now in connection with the above classical experiment, that if we like to wonder at various things and become amazed, as some do in quantum mechanics, we can do it here in this classical example too. Wow! For instance, we may be puzzled by the fact that a measurement MA prime, which we carry out on vessel A, and which gives the result quote, yes. In some quote, mysterious way causes MB to be necessarily quote, yes, and not anything else, if someone cares to check that. Therefore, we may continue, if we consider this path of thought fruitful, to get further amazed that information between A and B has passed at a speed greater than the speed of light. We can even write that the common probability PAB does not equal any more the product PAPB and conclude all kinds of other things. 
the above indicates that the notion of two entirely isolated particles in quantum mechanics, which somehow exchange information among themselves, loses content. This is, of course, if we will not be willing to accept, and it is very likely we won't, that also the two buckets exchange information among themselves. The above argument is one of many that can be given in support of the fact that quantum mechanics is nothing else but misunderstood classical mechanics, which has taken a wrong turn. This fact one can see by starting with the demonstration that, say, black body radiation density is derived purely classically, and further observing that even the formal recipes quantum mechanics prescribes lead to non physical outcomes in some fundamental cases. The cure for all these problems is to abandon quantum mechanics and return to classical mechanics, especially by correcting its current inadequate understanding of motion. Discussion of this mandatory correction is the subject of other presentations.